really not sliding, is it? Good morning, everybody. Morning? Okay. Uh, morning, everyone. Why did I say it again? Hey everybody and welcome back to The Average. Today we are painting over scary stories to tell in the dark because it is a dark and gloomy day where I am and I thought it was a perfect time to do it. Look how shiny this book is. It's going to be really fun to uh, paint that over. We're going to start by uh, scratching off the cover and painting over it with a medium base. I've got this super base that I'm going to try using today because so many people are like, hey, did you try putting down like some kind of medium to... Uh, make it easier for you to paint on the books and I was like you know I haven't so that's a really good point I'm gonna try that so I'm gonna do that today a disclaimer if you don't like me destroying books well I'm not destroying them I'm making them better in my opinion for my own collection my own book collection and uh, I don't like movie covers and books so that's why we're gonna paint over this movie cover and book because I think it's a little cheesy and uh, it's just here to sell the movie which is a little bit annoying because the book is a whole thing in its own right and if the book didn't exist then the movie wouldn't have existed so sort of the, the book is more important anyway I, I know what it's doing i understand but i don't like it <laughs> i do kind of like this character though i thought that the film was a little bit stupid a little bit cheesy and uh well obviously it's for kids but not really because they made it like super dark where people are actually dying and stuff so i don't know i liked it because the costumes were really cool and the, the visuals were cool, but that was about it. The story was a little bit meh. So that's a little movie review, a little extra for you. So let's start with the paint over. I'm gonna start by scratching off this stuff. And I thought today what I would do is include a little bit of glow in the dark paint, which is this lip paint by Stuart Semple. And uh, I have a whole review video on it. Uh, I'll link that up here. If you guys want to hear more about this, it's really cool. So we're going to try and use that on the book today. Hooray, let's get going. So I start off by scratching off all the shiny, glossy glaze to this cover, which I do every single time. And it's always quite satisfying, but also like the cringiest part of the, the whole process because there is like no going back from here. I lay down the base coat and I have to say that it really did help so thanks for everyone who pointed that out. Um, this is just like the super base that I used to mix um, pigments in so it was going to work as a base and it, it really helped to like just make putting the paint down a bit easier on top of the books. I'm using my jelly gouache, the Artex ones for this paint over and I really wanted to focus on using like a limited colour palette and mixing my own colours and not using the colours straight out of the, the pans basically. I wanted to make it just a bit more, a little bit more complex and rich in colour than the colours that you see in the in the pans there because the pans are a kind of pastel palette and I was wanting to go with a little bit more of a deeper colour palette for that because I wanted to do a room scene at night so I wanted to use more like darker hues and I wanted to use hues of the same sort of colour family so what I'm doing here is I'm mixing a dark blue, greeny blue and then making it steadily more green and lighter as I go on because I really like the idea of making the sky outside the window a light greeny blue. I thought that would be a really nice colour scheme. So I'm using this greeny blue and then I'm going to go in with darker blues and maybe a bit of orange here and there. So I start off by just roughing out where I want each aspect of the concept to go. So I'm just steadily putting where I think lighter areas will be uh, down a paint. So this will be like the underpainting of the overall painting. So all this will kind of shine through the painting that I do over the top to create like a sort of mood and feel. It will be like a little bit visible in certain areas. So it was important to get like the right colors there. I'm mixing the skin tones now for the main character who's going to be on the book. In the in the book, there's not really any main characters because they're just like a collection of short stories, like short horror stories for children. And there's lots of different characters and it's kind of it's kind of goofy and some are kind of creepy, but it's it's mostly just like fun and like creepy tales for kids. So I wanted to have a kid reading the book at night and in the doorway there you can see something sneaking out at her. I thought that would be a really fun way to connect with the book and sort of hint what it's about as if maybe this girl is reading the stories that's actually in this book. 
So there's a little bit of a whimsy, whimsical thing there where it's like she's reading the book that we are painting over, I don't know. <laughs> to talk a little bit about the artist, I was really inspired by the illustrator, um, Stephen Gamel, who did all these amazing, like, scary illustrations for these books originally and did all the covers and then inside of the book says these scary illustrations and I thought they were so interesting, they're so loose and scary and they are very like detailed and creepy for kids. I think like nowadays I think it would be a bit too scary for kids but back in the day they were like whatever, kids can handle this, I don't know. I think, um, I don't know if it would be published now because it's so, it is really creepy but I think that works as well because I think when I was a kid I was like, if I'd see something creepy I'd be like, oh yeah, that looks awesome, I'm, I'm totally going to read it. And yeah, so I really liked his style of illustrations and I wanted to kind of emulate or pay respect to his characterizations of the books because I feel like he really sets the tone with his drawings throughout and they're kind of this sporadic painterly style, watercolored, um, dripping, loose, uh, creepy style of characters. So when I come to draw the monster in the background, I take a lot of inspiration from him and just try to fill up the page with a little bit of a, a spooky outline of some sort of monster. It's not quite clear what it is, but yeah, that's kind of a, inspired by him. I took a while to draw the girl reading. I really liked the way that she turned out. I thought it was really interesting. It was a little bit difficult to paint the duvet cover because she's holding a duvet on top of her and reading with a torch at night, like, you know, the classic trope of kids reading at night when they're told to turn off the light and they have a torch and they're reading under the covers so the, the mum or somebody can't see the light shining through the door. So I thought that would be a fun, like, little thing to do. Is, like, she's reading the book, can't see, like, this monster creeping up behind her. And she's just in her bed reading with a torchlight. And I thought it was kind of like a nice image. And uh, I really had fun doing this. It, like I said, it was difficult to paint the depth of the duvet or make it look like she was lying under a duvet. I think I tried a lot to make that seem realistic and not just like there's something on top of her like a sheet so in the end I did spend probably most of my time making the girl and the duvet and the torch a little bit more realistic than I wanted to but I think in the end it looks really nice and I really like the way that she turned out I did spend a long time on her face because I was a bit stuck I was getting to that stage where it's like, oh no, this isn't working out, and then I just push through it, and it looked cute in the end. She looks happily reading there, innocent, not knowing what's coming. <laughs> so I'm just using those three shades of the browns um, and a slightly lighter orange hue for the skin tone because I wanted it to be as if the torch is reflecting light on her face and kind of lighting up her face a little bit. So I used that kind of orangey hue color there. And then I used like a darker brown um, for the shadows. And then I used like a really dense, um, really dense dark blue, black kind of color for underneath the shadows to sort of indicate where she was. And uh, that the underneath there is like underneath a blanket of darkness. And I think that kind of comes across eventually. <laughs> to talk more about the book, I really enjoy the book. It's just fun, like some of the stories, like I said, are quite creepy, but some of them are just so stupid. And if you guys want to laugh, then you should look up the, um, the book um, narration on YouTube because some of them are so funny because the, the, the narrator just goes over the top for them, but it's like quite funny because he just like screams at the end of some of the, the stories and you're just like, what? <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? It's a little bit funny. But I guess as a kid reading them, you'd probably be a little bit frightened. And I guess if you are scared of horror and stuff, so maybe maybe it would be a bit scary. But I do just think it's a little bit cheesy. But I kind of like cheesy horror as well. So I, I, I enjoyed them. They're just a bit of fun and uh, a bit of silliness. Some of them are creepy. Like the first story is about like... This kid finds a toe, random, in the garden and just takes it. <laughs> and then something comes at night and is like, give me back my big toe. You guys have probably all heard that story. And I was like, that is actually quite creepy. Like something slowly crawling up your staircase. I think that's always 
the standard uh, scary story though isn't it when you were young it's like something's coming up the stairs when you're lying in bed and gonna get you and it's like uh, you can just imagine something creeping up through the darkness yeah so that's like a classic uh, scary thing when you're a kid also probably quite scary when you're an adult to imagine something creeping up the stairs but that's kind of generally what these stories are like and the movie kind of tries to make a connection between all these stories rather than being just separate little short stories so it's a little bit different and I think you can tell that in the movie it's a little bit of a stretch it's like these kids find this book and unleash all these things I think that's what happens it was so like (laughs) it was one of those films that you don't like it so you kind of forget what it's about I think I watched it like a long time ago but yeah and I don't know, there's all these scary things like the scarecrow in the in the forest like kills this kid and he becomes the scarecrow. It's all like intertwined, but it's just a little bit like eh <laughs> How is this related? I think it would have been cooler to have like short stories, a film of short stories, like that would be interesting, but I guess that wouldn't really be a film. Maybe they could make a series of it, that would be cool. If they actually made it like super scary and uh well just for kids, I guess, would be more interesting. I think it, I think the film found it hard to find its audience because I think it was a little bit too scary for like 12 year olds but it was a little bit too like cheesy for adults if that makes sense I don't know it was kind of like borderline needed to find the right tone I guess anyway the book's kind of fun and interesting the illustrations are amazing so if you can find like one of these books in a bookshop or something and just check it out and have a look at the illustrations or you can search the guy online as well and just have a look at his illustrations it's really cool and interesting definitely took a big inspiration and because i'm working on my horror comic now i was like oh this is really cool because it's so different to what i would do to indicate horror so it's interesting to see somebody else's take on that and i really like looking at like pictures of people drawing horror stuff and yeah So anyway, I'm going in with the -the glow-in-the-dark paint now. What you do is you pour out this super base, like I said, and the lip uh, powder is basically like a pigment. So it's like this glow-in-the-dark pigment is pretty messy, as you can see. And uh, I just pour a lot into that super base, and it comes out like a white, sort of tinted-y, yellowish-green hued white. And uh, so when you're painting it down, it doesn't turn invisible, which or transparent would be a better word, um, which I wanted because I think it's better that if it was transparent and then you take it into the into the dark, it glows. That would be more fun. So I had to try and figure out how to use this in a way that it didn't look a bit silly. So like I said, I wanted to pay homage to the illustrator. So I kind of took inspiration from his monsters and stuff, which are all like droopy and drippy and So I was having fun with this, I was just like playing with texture, using my fingers to push around like the textures and the lighting of this glow in the dark paint and like kind of taking inspiration of these gaping mouths that he has on his characters and like big eyes and stuff. And then I went in with like some wetter paint and I was putting down splotches of this paint and then going away and using the hairdryer to suddenly push all the paint away so you would have like drips of this essence or this like glow of this monster dripping away from him or her or it and uh, I thought it really added to like the feeling of this character is just like this big mass of whatever it is coming through the doorway and she's uh, non- not aware of it she's just reading so she can't see what's going on so it was really fun to play around with trying to make something look a bit creepy i haven't done that for a while like i know i've been doing my horror comic but i haven't got to the part where stuff is creepy yet um that probably doesn't make sense but it's like steadily builds up and then i think the last time i drew something creepy was probably in emily is burning my other horror comic and then i also did a it paint over so if you enjoyed this one you might enjoy the it paint over so yeah it was it was difficult to be like trying to draw something to look creepy rather than cheesy and uh i have such a big respect for people who can like create scary looking images because i think that's such a difficult thing to do to look at something and be like oh that's creepy it's just it's kind of hard to do without it being too silly or weird so i hope that this kind of looks creepy to you guys let me know if it looks creepy i think i do pull it off in the end but maybe i could have added a little bit more to it but i was running out of time because i had to upload this video so i kind of just went with this and i was enjoying how it looked so i didn't want to 
go too overboard with it in case I ruined it. So what do you guys think? That's the end product and I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. I am obviously going to show this now in the glow in the dark setting where I have to go into the hallway and show it in the dark. But uh, yeah, let's look at it in the light first to see how it turned out on all the details and stuff. I really do like this one. I think it's one of my favorite ones that I've done for a while. Let me know what you guys think down below. And um, if you want to stick around, I'm going to put a little bit of my horror comic update at the end of this. So if you want to see that, then just stick around for the end of the video. Okay, so I'm in my hallway right now, and this is how the book looks with the lights on. And here's how it looks with the lights off. As you can see, it's <laughs> kind of fun. Um, it's just a little fun thing to add to this paint over and I think it looks so funny with the with the lights off and this like creepy dude looks scary. <laughs> oh. On. Off. What do you guys think? That's really fun isn't it? Um, yeah, I really enjoyed using the, the glow in the dark paint here. So thanks for watching guys, please like and subscribe for more content and stick around now to hear about how my horror comic is going if you're interested, otherwise I'll see you next time, bye! So here are the thumbnails, as you guys have seen before, I'm working off them, I've been adding like a little bit of stuff here and there where I think the story needs a little bit of a buffer because otherwise it doesn't make sense. Um, I've done like quite a good few pages now. Uh, this is one of the panels where she realizes she's turning invisible and yeah it's uh, it's going well. I've done quite a lot of work. I don't want to show you guys too much in case you want to read it and don't want to spoil it but yeah this is kind of the style of it and uh, I hope that you like the look of it. It's It's looking good. I think, in my opinion. <laughs> I'm really enjoying working on it. I've done about um, 10 pages now, so I've got six pages left of this comic, the Regency comic, and then I will have um, to do the other little comic that goes with it, because it's going to be a horror duology. And yeah, so this is, this is it. I'm working on it, and I'm watching um, this show, Superstore. I've never seen it. It's quite funny. It's one of those shows where you can just like listen along with it. I've got my pencils here ready to go wherever I need them and then my set of stuff and then yeah so it's pretty messy but it's my process it's the evening it's actually kind of half ten so I'll probably work on this for like another hour and then go to bed um, and that's kind of been my schedule uh, it's it's fun it's difficult but it's good because it's good because I'm actually getting stuff done so I think working from home really helps because it I don't have to commute anywhere and stuff so I have that time to like chill and then go and do some work okay so I finished the coloring of this page and some penciling of this page but I still need to do the pencils here um, if you haven't been watching my vlogs I've been using a colored pencil to line stuff I just really like the way that it looks the textures and stuff I go back in and I kind of rough it up a bit as well with like textures of pencils and stuff and different uh, colors which I'm really enjoying doing so yeah I need to do that for this but I've gotten pretty tired so I'm gonna go to bed now because it's now midnight so <laughs> time to stop